go. Starting off this countdown, we have the Blue Leaks. In June of 2020, following the killing of George Floyd and the protests, Anonymous leaked hundreds of gigabytes of law enforcement files. It has been named the Blue Leaks. Over 269 gigabytes of data were taken from over 200 law enforcement agencies. This included emails, audio recordings, videos, and documents. In total, there were millions of files leaked. Some of the leaked documents show that the FBI was monitoring the social media accounts of protesters, and they were also alerting local law enforcement about anti-police messages. Other documents showed that the FBI was tracking Bitcoin donations to protest groups, as well as highlighted some scandals and police misconduct. Coming in at number nine, we have the Mount Rushmore Vault. Now, this next one is going to sound like it was pulled out of a comic book, but I will let you know that it is 100% real. Behind Abraham Lincoln's head on Mount Rushmore is a secret tunnel that leads to a massive room that is full of US documents. Like, come on. I remember Team America World Police, they had a secret base in Mount Rushmore, but this couldn't be the truth. But would I lie to you? This was actually the original vision of the man who built Mount Rushmore. And can I just say for a moment that this is probably the most patriotic thing that anyone has ever done? I mean, you could put a flag in your front yard, but that is nothing compared to the amount of work that went into building faces of some of the most famous presidents in America into the side of a mountain. But inside this vault are some government documents. Now, what's on those documents, no one really knows. It could be anything. They could be extremely valuable. It could be the declaration of independence, or it could be just a bunch of boring files that don't really mean anything. And you're not going to get invited into, and you are not going to get invited into this vault unless you have some sort of government power. Coming in at number eight, we have the Lehman Brothers Secret Times Square building. When you look at all of the massive buildings in Times Square, you probably think that rent must be super high to have a spot in one of those buildings. Well, you would be right, but there is something that is even more valuable than renting the space. It's ads. If every building in Times Times Square is covered in ads because companies will pay out the butt to have all their stuff promoted up there. And the Lehman Brothers saw this as an opportunity and decided that was all they needed for their building. One of the centerfold buildings in Times Square is owned by the Lehman Brothers and there is nothing in it. If you were to walk around inside this building, you would literally just have open spaces and dangling wires. The whole thing just acts as a massive billboard and it's probably very profitable because they don't need to worry about any building upkeep. Coming in at number seven, we have Ni Hao Hawaii. How big could a secret room be? Well, how about 70 square miles? Well, this one isn't so much a room, but it is very much an island and it is definitely a secret that the government is trying to keep secret from everyone. This place is closed off to visitors. It is a self-sufficient island that only has 130 people living on it. And although the people are allowed to leave, no one is allowed to enter outside of medical services. There are some very strict rules on this island. For one, there is no booze. Just so you know, you wouldn't be able to sneak on the island and have a big party. The people there aren't really into that. Also, there are no guns, which is probably a good thing, but again, it brings down how much excitement there will be at any given time. And this place has chosen a way of life that is very different from our own. They don't have any plumbing, they have no traditional roads, and everything in terms of food is taken from the land by farmers and brought to the people. They do have electricity, however. All of that comes from solar panels, but they do not have internet. So you're going to have to get very good at talking to people. What a scary thought. Coming in at number six, we have the Eiffel Tower apartment. If you go to Paris, you can now see what would be the most expensive apartment in the whole city, and that is the Eiffel Tower apartment. The man who built the Eiffel Tower didn't only do it so he could have his masterpiece be the center of attention. No, he wanted to have the best apartment maybe in the world. At the top of the Eiffel Tower is an apartment that only could be accessed by one man who built the Eiffel Tower himself. Gustav Eiffel. Now, people can go visit, but that isn't even the most secret part of this secret room. There's also something that is underneath one of the legs of the Eiffel Tower, and that is a military bunker that can prep troops in the heart of the city without the enemy catching on. Could you imagine a bunch of French troops popping out of the base of the Eiffel Tower? You have to admit, the French have a way with theatrics. Coming in at number five, we have Club 33. Here's something that the super rich and the government want to keep hidden from you, and even with me telling you about it, there's a good chance that you still won't be able to afford the entrance fee. See, Club 33 is something that is hidden away in Disney World. We all know that Disney World is a place where kids come to have their dreams come true, but the kids aren't roaming around free. 
they're running around with their parents, who, after a long day in the sun taking care of Rugrats, probably want a drink. Turns out, you can't get booze when you're at Disney World, but you can if you're part of Club 33. This is a members-only club that is somewhat a high rollers lounge. Only the best of the best can join. You need a recommendation to get in, and on top of that, if you can get accepted, you have to pay a $25,000 membership fee and then $12,000 annually each year after that. It's very much a status symbol. Some suspect that Club 33 has something to do with Jesus or the devil, since we all know that number 33 has strong religious connotations. I don't know if that's true, but if you're blowing your money at Disney World in that amount, you're probably in the Illuminati. Coming in at number four, we have the secret train station under Waldorf Astoria. In movies, high-ranking government officials always have some sort of secret underground transportation that they can use to get around, and some of you think that that couldn't be a real thing in real life. There's no way that something like that could exist. Well, think again. Under one of the most famous hotels in New York, a hotel known as the Waldorf Astoria, there is a train station that is only used by the president himself. This is partly because almost every president has stayed there ever since its inception, but it's also one of the most secure ways for the president to travel. No one can get down there, and even if they did, there is a ton of secret features that the rail car has. For all we know, this thing could be built like a Bond car and have heat-seeking missiles that come through the headlights. Coming at number three, we have Room 39. This is one of the most secret places in North Korea, which is already a very secretive place. No one really knows what goes on in Room 39, but people suspect that government workers work in there to try and create revenue for North Korea through illegal activity. Thought that they could be cooking and organizing the distribution of crystal meth, and they are also finding ways to commit billions of dollars in insurance fraud. That is wild. Going at number two, we have the Vatican Bunker. Now, this isn't a place where the Pope can go to hide out if the world starts to end and because he was right about Armageddon. I mean, they probably have a room like that, but it won't be as exciting as the one I'm about to tell you about. The Vatican Bunker is a place where they keep all the files that have been held in the Vatican for centuries. We're talking about 1,200 years of paperwork. I mean, I think you could fit most of that stuff onto a hard drive, so I don't know why they're still doing the whole pen and paper thing, but to each their own. But the Vatican archives have all of the juicy details about everything the church has done for a long, long time. You better believe that all of this information is closed to the public. In fact, if you ever get access to this secret bunker, you have to be a high-ranking scholar, and you can only look through certain folders. The Pope will vet everything that an outsider has access to before they are allowed into the bunker. And there is a hard cutoff. Anything that is younger than 75 years old, there is zero access to. That is a hard and fast rule that only the Pope can break. And even with probably the most accepting Pope of all time, he isn't about to let any of this information slip. But there is a lot of people who want to get their hands on those files with all the problems the church has been getting into in recent years. I can't go into details on this channel because it's disturbing, but either you know what I'm talking about or you're going to go look it up right now. And coming in at the number one spot is Area 51. Come on, this has to be number one. What is going on in Area 51? Now, is this a room? Well, kinda, it's an indoor facility, so there is a room in there somewhere, I'm sure. But the whole thing has to be the biggest place that the government is hiding from us. And what is going on in there? We have no idea. I think we could all say aliens, that's probably what we're all thinking, but there could be some tech that will change the world. They could have mech suits in there that are like the ones from Pacific Rim. Just let us in already and we'll stop messing around with the stock market, I promise. Starting off this countdown, we have the Weipholm Experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force-fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Diego Garcia is a US occupied small island in the Indian Ocean. Technically, it's an overseas territory of Great Britain. In 1966, the people on the island were employed as contract farmers. They were working on coconut.
coconut plantations. But from 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. So in 1966, the United States was given the rights to use the island if they forgot about the 14 million debt that the UK owed them. Now the island is used by government officials and it's highly, highly guarded. In fact, rumor has it that the island is home to a secret prison. Rumor also has it that the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 that went missing without a trace actually just landed on this island. Not only that, but apparently rumor has it that this base is used by the CIA to torture prisoners. There's some crazy theories out there. I hope one day we'll find out if any of them are true. Then in 2009, the US military evicted several thousand of the island's local residents. Why they did this is still so top secret. Like they don't know why they got evicted. I really wish we knew. Something fishy is going on over there. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Like who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. The base also contains top secret US military research documents, which is one of the reasons why the government doesn't want you to know about it. Now, in 1968, the unbelievable happened at the base. On March 13th, a high speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It'll stop your respiratory muscles from working and then you'll just choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. The government denied that this was their fault, but people aren't buying it. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost a sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. So the government definitely doesn't want us to know any of that, so, but I know it and I shared it with you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have Camp Perry. Camp Perry, otherwise called The Farm, is a top secret training facility run by the CIA. The place is used to train CIA officers as well as officers working in the Defense Intelligence Agency. One of the reasons why this place is so secretive is because they don't want the identity of their top secret agents to be leaked. Because then, hello, they wouldn't be secret agents anymore, would they? Now, listen to just how intense this camp is. So former CIA officer Bill Wagner went to a three week interrogation course at the farm in 1970. He revealed that the people learning to be good interrogators practice techniques such as sleep deprivation, mock execution, and would deliberately taint food, which exposes that CIA interrogators use these techniques in real life. Of course, the US government has never formally acknowledged the existence of this camp. Although many people know that it's real. Coming in at number six, we have Area 51. Of course, I had to put this one on the list. Hello, everyone wants to know what the heck is going on at that top secret base. Like, are the rumors true? Do they really have animals hiding there? Are they conducting unethical tests on humans? Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories because it's so highly protected and secretive. Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to even get close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. What do you think goes on in Area 51? Let me know in the comments below. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence Analysis. This is a training school in Reston, Virginia for CIA analysts. The school has been given the nickname The Vault because of how many locks and alarms and guards it has. So basically, the school opened in May of 2000 and it apparently teaches members many important things such as foreign languages, regional studies, satellite image analysis, wiretap transcript analysis, and media report analysis. So basically, everything you think a spy would need to know. This place is basically spy school, which is super cool. Now, like all places on this list, this one is also heavily guarded. It is located on the second floor of a five story structure. The glass windows are smoked to prevent people from looking in and spying. The building also contains sensors to prevent eavesdropping from outside. 
And like I said, it's protected by a number of locks and alarms and surveillance. In our fourth spot, we have Men With Hill. Men With Hill is a Royal Air Force base located in the UK. In fact, it is said to be one of the most secretive places in the UK. First off, the place is super odd. Like, there's a bunch of white domes all over the place that look like giant golf balls. Like, I feel like it's just the government's own mini putt or golfing range or something like that, but it's not. This site is said to be the largest electronic monitoring system on the planet. So basically, it's a place where they spy on us, monitoring our every move. The site first opened to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Since then, we don't know exactly what they're spying on. But it's a vital part of the NSA surveillance network. In 2012, it was believed that the base was involved in a number of drone attacks. However, this has never been confirmed. On top of that, it was revealed that the NSA used the base to, and I quote, aid a significant number of capture kill operations. That is terrifying, wow. Moving on to number three, we have Kapustin Yar. Kapustin Yar is basically Russian's version of Area 51. It is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, rumor has it that it is home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky right above this base. Others claim to have seen three-eyed aliens wearing silver overalls there. I mean, hey, at least he's stylish. In fact, most alien sightings in Russia occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. It could be that aliens are trying to escape from this base or something like that. There's even rumors of this base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't even want to know if I want to find out what goes on in there. In our second spot, we have the Secret Super Command Bunker. Apparently, the Pentagon is planning to build a secret command bunker 3,500 feet under Washington, D.C. What's the purpose of this bunker, you ask? Well, just in case of nuclear war, the bunker will keep people safe from the nukes. Apparently, the pandemic shook the US government and now they, and I quote, put plans in place to ensure critical elements of the US government can keep functioning in the midst of an extreme crisis. So they're basically gonna be like, sick, every man for themselves, peace out, and then just disappear into this secret bunker. And in our number one spot, we have Porton Down. Close to Stonehenge, there's a place called Porton Down, which is basically a massive experimental testing center. It's known for working on chemical and biological weapons, as well as dealing with dangerous pathogens. The stuff that goes on in there is dark, and I mean dark. Starting in 1945, the government began testing nerve gas on real humans. These testings on humans went until 1989. In the end, more than 3,400 people had nerve gas tested on them. In 1953, a man named Ronald Madison died after being subjected to liquid nerve gas. Not only did they lie and say they were no longer testing the gas on humans, but they denied that the nerve gas was the cause of his death. Recently, however, it was discovered that they are now testing this gas and other dangerous weapons on animals. What else goes on in there is unknown. Like, what if they're still running unethical tests on humans? It's crazy. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have SIM cards. We see all the time in movies and shows when people are trying to be super secret, they smash their phone and their SIM card, but as it turns out, maybe we should all be smashing our SIM cards, super secret lifestyle or not. In February of 2015, it was reported that Snowden provided documents that showed that the NSA and GCHQ had hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year and they supply places like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and a variety of other providers. While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both voice and data transmissions of every user that has a SIM card made by this company. The company did reply to the situation and said that they had been the 
target of at least two, quote, particularly sophisticated intrusions, and they suggested that they believed that the NSA and the GCHQ were responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to those encryption keys. Coming in at number 9, we have PPD29. Catchy. In 2015, a bomber released his new hostage policy, which was called President Policy Directive Number 30. Now, the last publicly announced derivative was PPD 28, which led people to realize that 29 must have been passed under the radar. PPD 29 is clearly a secret national security order. This literally is a secret, so I have no idea what to tell you other than it exists, and in six years' time, its declassification will be up for discussion. We may find out sooner if the law ever needs to be executed publicly, although as it's in the national security interest we probably don't want to find out until it's declassified. Coming into number 8, we have swine flu. Ok, hands up if you actually contracted swine flu. Me! But I wasn't living in the United States so maybe this doesn't apply, but still, it sucked, although I've never been as skinny as after I recovered. Swings and roundabouts. So it's been 10 years since the outbreak of swine flu which caused a global pandemic, but actually it turned out to not be as bad as everyone thought it would be, thank goodness. Nonetheless, 10 years means that documents regarding the governments knowledge on the epidemic are soon to be declassified. It seems from a Forbes article that something shady may have been going on with the government and swine flu. The article suggests that not only were sick pigs not being monitored, but also that the government funded Centre for Disease Control were very protective of their data. They were not fulfilling the public health mission by sharing their findings. Coming into number 7, we have quote unquote sicko jokes. In September 2018, it was revealed that the Cold War era jokes had been discovered among millions of declassified documents regarding Soviet Russia. The CIA's deputy director in the 1980s received a document entitled Sicko Jokes. It was a file of jokes told amongst Soviets themselves about their own leaders. One corker from the era was, a worker stands in line at a liquor store. They say, I've had enough. Save my place. I'm going to shoot Gorbachev. Two hours later, he returns to reclaim his place in line. His friend asks, did you get him? To which they reply, no. The line there was even longer than the line here. Troll a lol a lol, some classic 1989 slash 90 humour. Sure. Gorbachev of course was the last leader of the Soviet Union and at the helm amid its collapse. My point being that if the CIA had a list of jokes about the Soviet Union, they absolutely have documents containing loads of jokes for all political leaders and honestly, I kinda wanna hear them. Building on from that, Soviet secrets are coming into number 6. In the name of access to information, which is something democracies are supposed to champion, the CIA is obliged to declassify documents. Sure. One way they get around this is by releasing a whole load at the same time and hoping that the juicy information, the shady information, goes unnoticed in the sea of data. This may or may not have been their thought process when they released millions, actually millions, of Soviet era files in 2017. It's already been revealed that the CIA recruited mind readers to spy on Soviets, with the job title Remote Viewers in something called Project Stargate. What do the other 12 million files? I always have to reveal? I'll have to wait and see, but like, I don't know, Project Stargate sounded pretty exciting. Okay, I swear. This is the last I will mention Russia in this list, but now seems like a good time to mention Donald Trump's Russia release at number 5. In late 2018, Donald Trump ordered the release of classified documents regarding the Russian interference with the 2016 election. The White House announced that the press had asked the Justice Department and the Director of the National Intelligence to publish secret material. On September the 6th, 2018, he tweeted, maybe declassification to find additional corruption. He was seeming to suggest that there was some kind of deep state working to undermine him. The statement came a year after it was revealed in declassified documents that Russia did actually interfere with the election. By the end of September 2018, Trump had backed down somewhat on the document release and asked a justice watchdog to review the Russian docs. Hmm. Coming into number 4, we have weapons of mass destruction. It has been 18 years since the war on terror began and 16 years since the onset of the 
Iraq War when the United States decided to invade the Middle Eastern country. Some documents have already been declassified, the rest may come at the 25 year mark in 2026 and 2028 so not long now. In 2015 the CIA seemingly declassified the documents justifying the war, two years after President Obama declared the war over. The document was from 13 years prior and was supposed to be a justification for the war but in actuality it revealed that the US were lacking and I quote specific information on many key aspects of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. Basically the declassified documents show that it was all a little bit of a ruse. The declassified document led to congress concluding that the Bush administration had overstated the Iraqi threat. I wonder what else we will learn about these so called weapons of mass destruction from the documents when they're declassified. Coming into number 3 we have the JFK assassination. John F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated over 50 years ago and there are still a lot of questions surrounding his murder. The official line is that the perpetrator was Lee Harvey Oswald but there are a number of conspiracies that suggest that this isn't the full story. There has been a slow release of classified files on the November 1963 assassination of JFK but of course thousands remain a secret. Donald Trump released further Kennedy files to the public but the full story is of course yet to come. Not all of the documents were released, some were very much held back so the full story on one of the most high profile deaths of all time is yet to be told. Coming into number 2 we have Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay was set up by the George Bush administration in 2002. It is a United States prison camp filled mainly with suspected terrorists. Rumours of detainee torture and imprisonment without trial were very much just rumours until the CIA were forced to declassify a number of reports on the controversial prison. I'll read an excerpt from a Guantanamo Bay document I found in the FBI declassified vault. On a couple of occasions I entered an interview room to find a detainee chained hand and foot in the fetal position to the floor with no chair, food or water. Most times they had urinated or defecated themselves and had been left there for 18 to 24 hours or more. On one occasion the air conditioning had been purposefully turned up so far that the temperature was so cold. The detainee was barefoot and shaking from the cold. On another occasion the AC had been turned off completely making the temperature in the unventilated room well over 100 degrees. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him, he'd literally been pulling it out throughout the night. The report also mentions the sound torture that had been rumoured. The information was supposed to be declassified in 2031 but during the Obama administration there was a data dump of declassified Guantanamo documents. Again though, there are still thousands of files waiting to be released which will further reveal the extent of government torture and more. Finally coming into number 1 we have 9-11. It has been 18 years since 9-11, so does that mean in 6 years time we're going to find out exactly what happened? <sighs> Will we read classified government documents that detail exactly how the planes hit and what it took to melt steel beams? Will we find out more about the alleged pipeline through Afghanistan? Was there advanced knowledge of an attack? Did the government ignore warnings? My guess is we're going to need to wait longer than the usual 25 years for these answers as likely the classified documents are still pretty sensitive. Some answers are coming though, many documents have already been declassified. The Obama administration famously declassified the final 28 pages of the December 2002 report. This was conducted by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Honestly like I think in my lifetime we will have more answers. I really 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 hope so. Starting off this countdown we have the NSA spy hubs. We all know that the NSA is spying on us ok, that's old news. I mean in 2013 former contractor for the CIA Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of millions of Americans and spying on us through our phone calls. Well it turns out they have multiple top secret bases. Half of them we don't even know where they're located, we just know that they're out there. Somewhere. These spy hubs are often windowless skyscrapers. There are some in Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle and of course Washington DC. These buildings though aren't regular buildings, no, no of course not. They are highly secure and guarded. In fact they are built to withstand terrorist attacks, nuclear attacks and natural disasters. 
So not only do we not know where they're located, we don't know what they're doing in all of these hubs besides spying on American citizens. So you better behave. They're watching. Always watching. In our ninth spot, we have Trump's dirty laundry. And I don't mean like literally his stinky socks and undies. In May of 2020, Anonymous came after Trump during his presidency. This happened when Trump threatened to deploy his military force against the protesters. But Anonymous was like, nah, -uh, honey, you aren't doing that. And said they had dirt on him. They said that they would publish his dirty laundry. A couple of days later, they published 169 emails that mentioned Trump one way or another. Now, most of the emails weren't even bad, but it was just a scare tactic to show Trump, like, hey, we're not bluffing, okay? We got dirt on you. More on this in my next point. Coming in at number eight, we have Trump's connection to Jeffrey Epstein. So like I said, Anonymous leaked some emails about Trump. Well, they also threatened to release information connecting Trump to Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Trump and Epstein have been photographed together on a number of occasions. Apparently, they also have hung out with each other too. Some believe that Trump was a part of Epstein's ring and also exploited young females. And Anonymous apparently has proof, including access to Epstein's address book and old court documents. Technically, I'm cheating with this point since they didn't leak this information, but they did expose that they have this information. In our seventh spot, we have the Brazilian government. In June of 2020, Anonymous released personal information on the Brazilian president and his family and cabinet. This caused a lot of chaos. The federal police and the Brazilian Congress began to investigate. In the end, it was revealed that the federal government used two million of the public's money to fund advertising on several websites. Most of the websites supported the president, which makes sense as to why they wanted to put money into them. Not only that, but Anonymous leaked a number of government officials' addresses, income, and other personal information. The personal addresses were a very serious issue because it puts them at risk for attacks. Moving on, at number six, we have CSIS documents. So what I didn't know is that apparently Anonymous has some beef with the Canadian government. One of their first attacks leaked secrets about the foreign activities of the Canadian Secret Intelligence Service, aka the CSIS. It released information about the size of their network, what information they have access to, along with other sensitive government documents. The Canadian government has only admitted to having foreign stations in Washington, London, and Paris. But according to the documents leaked, they have over 25 foreign stations. And I quote, many of which are located in developing countries and or unstable environments. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with a secret federal document. In another attack against Canada, Anonymous leaked top secret documents outlining the redevelopment of Canada's key diplomatic centers in Britain including selling, relocating, and refurbishing Canada's diplomatic buildings in London. Now, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's the fact that they got a hold of these top secret documents that's concerning. The documents were marked as confidence of the Queen's Privy Council, which basically means that it's top secret and private documents. Therefore, the government of Canada is looking into its own people to see if someone among them is leaking these documents to Anonymous, or maybe they're a part of Anonymous. In our first spot, we have the hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. In January of 2021, Anonymous attacked the government of Malaysia. They defaced 17 government and university websites. This was part of their campaign called hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. Basically, the purpose of this campaign was to highlight the poor security of the government's websites and to warn people about it. In a post, they said, and I quote, Greetings, we are Anonymous Malaysia. This is message to Government Malaysia. Your security system is low. All data may be leaked. This can cause unwanted hackers selling all your information. Basically, they accused the government for keeping silent and covering up a number of data breaches that occurred over the years. The government knew that personal information of their citizens was being obtained and sold, and they just kinda covered it up until Anonymous exposed them. Coming in at number three, we have Anonymous Malaysia part two. During the Anonymous Malaysia attack, they also revealed that Facebook was selling private information to government agencies. In a post, Anonymous said, and I quote, 
If you're a hacktivist willing to, or a man who just wants to protect his freedom of information and join the cause and kill Facebook for your own privacy. Facebook has sold information to government agencies and gave secret access to information security firms so they can spy on people from around the world. You can't hide from reality where you are. You're neither safe from any government. Someday you'll look back on this and realize what we've done here is right. You'll thank the internet government. We will not harm you, but we will save you. Okay guys, it is time to deactivate Facebook. Nice. Coming in at number two, we have Epic. In September of 2021, Anonymous leaked data from Epic, which is basically a domain registrar and a web hosting company that has provided service to websites that publish neo-Nazi and extremist content. It's a pretty controversial platform, and Anonymous leaked details of every domain that was ever hosted or registered through them. It also leaked a number of personal information of their customers, like their purchase records, emails, invoices, and credit card information. Over 15 million email addresses were exposed. In fact, they released three rounds of data on their website. The first was in February of 2021, the second in September, and the third in October. In October, they actually leaked information on documents belonging to the Texas Republican Party. And in our number one spot today, we have the NSA. So thanks to Edward Snowden, we all know that the NSA was spying on Americans through their phone records. Well, Anonymous just exposed the existence of a secret NSA and FBI program called PRISM. This program allows the NSA and FBI to take photos, videos, emails, and chats from the servers of nine different internet companies, including Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and Apple. Anonymous leaked 13 huge documents about this program, and it revealed that the NSA is not only spying on Americans, but also citizens of over 35 different countries as well. Anonymous said, and I quote, we bring this to you so that you know just how little rights you have. Your privacy and freedoms are slowly being taken away from you in closed doors meetings, in laws buried in bills, and by people who are supposed to be protecting you. Coming in at number 10, we have the Empire State Building 103rd floor viewing room. I mean, if you want to see the whole New York skyline and you don't want to break the bank on your trip to the top of the Empire State Building, and you want to grab a drink, you better believe that there's a hotel called The Standard that has all of those things. But for those of you who really want to head to the top of New York and can't do it without popping into the iconic Empire State Building, then I'll have you know that you're not even getting the best view. You spent all that money to go to the top of the Empire State Building only to find out that there is a secret room that you are not qualified to check out. There happens to be a hundred and third floor that you can't get to. This helps the rich and famous see the whole city without tourist crowds. Now I'm sorry, but just going to the front desk and asking if you can get there isn't enough. You actually have to be someone of status. Unless you're very rich, very famous, or a government official, you are not going anywhere near the hundred and third floor. I'm sorry, but you're just not important enough. The government and the people who run the building don't want you going up to that floor because it's going to lose its attraction. I'm sorry, but you're going to be stuck on the 102nd floor, looking up, wondering which important people are hovering above you. In our ninth spot, we had the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now, the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. In some cases, they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, I was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. 
It's disgusting and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably going to wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project SHAD, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project SHAD took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococco enterotoxin B, which causes food food poisoning, and sarin and soman gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and soman can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues without family's consent. It's said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos, like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. 
And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies but it actually contained radioactive iron, and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them not kill them. All right, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have more MK Ultra. Sometimes the declassification of files reveals the wildest of conspiracy theories to be true. There was a rumor way back in the 1970s that the government was trying to find a way to control people's minds. The project involved human experimentation and the United States citizens were unwittingly doped with LSD. They underwent hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation and torture. John Greenwald, founder of Disclosure site The Black Vault obtained information on MK Ultra via the trusty Freedom of Information Act in 2004, but many files are still missing and many more were actually destroyed. Shockingly, CIA director Richard Helms ordered all of the MK Ultra files to be destroyed in 1973. In 2018, more than 4,000 new MK Ultra documents were requested from the CIA after a successful crowdfunding campaign. It seems that the new records will be released shortly and will contain undisclosed information on the behavior modification efforts. Number 9. Quantum Computer This next one is eye opening to say the least. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are going to ruin my life. They're getting really good at those. I feel like an old man every time I see those and fall for it. But thanks to our man Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014 that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. How fun must that be? It's called the Quantum Computer and it cost about 80 million dollars to create, and no, it can't send you back in time. This computer is safely stored in a massive room-sized metal box, which is not intimidating at all, and it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. I want to make so many jokes, but I won't. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, probably. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes, I don't know, years, but this supercomputer can break through a lot faster. I'm talking days. Just don't go in my MSN, please. In our number 8 spot today we have Project Dishfire. It was reported by The Guardian that it had been revealed that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. They then use these messages to pull the details of certain location information, contact networks, and the credit card details of different mobile users. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of the data just without the actual context of the text messages. So the NSA has all your secrets and nudies, but at least they didn't share them? I don't know. Basically they have all of this data and at any point could potentially extract certain information like past travel plans, your financial transactions, your contacts, regardless of whether or not you were being investigated for something. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and a little shady, and this revelation all came before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in reality action to the whistleblowing that was going on around Snowden and the NSA. Number 7. Friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States are not safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, which by the way, not just a couple of random dudes, they were spying on 35 world leaders. One of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out of course, and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Really went personal with the friends comment there. It's like when you show somebody a photo on your phone and they start swiping, like hi, hello, betrayal, see ya. Now as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, what's the big deal here? Well, it was also reported that the NSA was 
monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. In our number six spot today, we have the Brazil spying scandal. It was reported by The Guardian that Brazil was second only to the United States in terms of the amount of communications that were being subjected to surveillance by the NSA. This means that the NSA were seriously spying on millions of Brazilians, including the emails and phone calls of their president. At the G20 summit that year, which took place in Russia, Brazil's president at the time, Dilma Rousseff, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Obama in reference to this. He said that he would look into it and get back to her, but before he could, more NSA tea was spilled and it was revealed that the agency had also targeted Petrobras, which is Brazil's state oil company. This led the president to call this new information industrial espionage, and as a result, she called off her scheduled visit to the White House and demanded answers. The called off visit was important because it was to be the first state visit by a Brazilian president in about two decades. And although the Obama administration claimed that it was a joint decision made by both presidents, some media outlets described it as the sternest punishment that had been received at that time in response to all of these NSA leaks. This also led Brazil to take a multitude of steps to hopefully get away from the American run internet. Number five, backup. When Glenn Greenwald kicked this whole thing off in 2013 with Snowden and his reveals, it was this massive security breach, obviously. Snowden was, of course, in hot water immediately, but he was ahead of the game from the start. See, Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy happens to him, well, he'll just leak even more information. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, for, then it was set up to automatically send those private documents to higher ups, aka the people directly involved in the leak. On top of that, Snowden reminded The Guardian that he has many, many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. This is why you make backups. Duly noted, Snowden. In our number four spot today, we have the embassy catastrophe. There was a document from 2007 that was leaked which named 38 different embassies and missions that were so-called targets of US surveillance. This document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversation, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece, and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. Number three, China. I mentioned earlier that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden leaked a PowerPoint training slideshow and the table return just like that. Snowden revealed himself as this massive spy kid on June 12th and he said he was planning on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out with all this information, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since back in 2009. That's a long time ago. It's like when Avatar 1 came out. That's how long ago that was. More specifically, Snowden said that the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. Now, of course, this is eye-opening, but there's many who see this hack attack as a good thing. See, citizens want to know what their government's up to, and honestly, I myself would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. So a poll was conducted on June 10th and 11, and apparently 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing. They were with him, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. 57% were not a fan of the NSA's action, while 37% were on board. 30% of folks liked the fact that they were being spied on. That's 
that's some weird kind of kink, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want the NSA in your Dropbox? Let us know in the comments your thoughts below. We'd love to hear from you. In our number two spot today, we have caller information. In 2013, it was reported by The Guardian that according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration has allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. This was done through what was called a quote, business records provision of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of George W. Bush. It allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. The information included things like the time, location, and duration of the call. The information began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Of course, once these documents were leaked and the information became public knowledge, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security, but many people rightfully felt like the spying was an unnecessary invasion of their privacy. This one is tricky because there certainly is a fine line with these things. And finally, number one. PowerPoint. Nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation. But when it comes to the NSA, odds are it's gonna be a little juicy. This slideshow is used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it? I did 45 on medieval nights in high school. Step your game up. This program called Prism cost about 20 million a year, and it was the highlight of this leak. Prism kicked off back in 2007. Originally, they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple, come 2012, well, that's when things got a little bit Fishy, as most things are with Apple, specifically their maps. That was horrible. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants like Google, Skype, or even YouTube. Yeah, right here, they're listening right now. So your search history, emails, anything that rolls through those, usernames, passwords, well, they've got them. Even skaterboy69 and Hotmail, odds are they're already looking. You're done, you're canceled, Brad. There was a summit in California, which originally was tense. The United States were accusing China of cyber attacks, but right after Edward leaked this prism tea, they didn't have much power at that summit. China and Europe's citizens weren't too pleased here, and honestly, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a botched meeting. I can understand why. Mm -hmm.